The life of a geoservices engineer is challenging, one of responsibility and diversity. Geoservices is a worldwide company that has been operating globally for more than 50 years, with headquarters in Paris and bases throughout the world. It is the world leader in the field of mud logging. This film illustrates the different stages of a mission to a worksite, mobilization of the personnel, operational base procedures, then departure to several well sites with their different oil field environments, and finally, the work that will be expected of you. Our most important mission is to give our best for the client and ensure our work is of the highest quality. The adventure often begins I'm with sorry. a telephone call. Yes, I'm just calling you to say that you have to go to for an induction. You will probably be required to pass through one of GeoService's 60 worldwide bases. For example, the base in Aberdeen, which is an important hub for oil field activity in the North Sea. On arrival, you will first follow an induction course, where you will be briefed on your mission, your client, and the job objectives. So Patrick, this is your induction seat. Good luck. Yeah, Take that with you and make sure the guy's completed for you and fax it in. Okay? Thank you very much. Thanks very much. If the mission demands specific skills or techniques that you have not used for a while, you may be asked to attend a training course followed by written tests. The results will be entered into a competence record that follows you during your career and enables efficient monitoring of your skill levels and the development of your career. When all is ready, you are fully briefed, your objective known, with your ticket in hand, you're off. Travel is one of the great benefits of the geoservices life, but you must be correctly prepared. International travel is not to be taken lightly. In our organization, we don't leave anything to chance. You will often be going to places that are unfamiliar to you, but GeoServices has already been there. Once you arrive, you will either be picked up by a GeoServices representative, or you will take a taxi to the designated arrival point. Whilst in transit, you could find yourself staying in company staff houses, bed and breakfasts, or even in international hotels. Another base, this time Houston. A geoservices base is an operational work site, and it is fundamental to the operational structure of the whole company. It fulfills the tasks of technical support and human resources. On the technical side, the base manages the deployment and operation of the logging units, which are highly sophisticated mobile laboratories that monitor all aspects of the drilling activity. Our engineers spend the majority of their time in these units. The base also regulates stocks of spares and consumable items and maintains equipment so as to be ready for rapid mobilization and shipping. The staff house is a place for relaxation and is also the occasion to get to know your fellow colleagues and even something about their homelands. I'm here in Houston. Uh, about to go offshore, uh, so that definitely is a plus for the job. An opportunity to travel, your services being worldwide. For me, this is a job, and uh, I always, always thought to to come here because I love this kind of a profession, petroleum geologist, and everything about the oil and the gas. Here, as is often the case, there is a mix of nationalities. As you can see, each has his own culinary preferences. Mobilization can occur at any time of day. Be aware that although it is planned in advance, it can be modified at the last moment due to operational factors at the well site or even climatic changes. Be at the departure point early for check-in. In this case, however, as can often happen, there was a delay. Due to heavy fog, the takeoff was postponed until midday. So, it's down to the local breakfast house and a hot coffee. You may also journey to an offshore platform by boat. Once again, be at the departure point early. There are always formalities and safety procedures to follow. Know at which rig to get off. Sometimes there are several stops. Transfer to the rig from boats usually involves using a basket. Carefully follow the safety instructions. 
You have certain procedures to follow when you arrive on an offshore platform, just as you do on a land rig. There will be a safety briefing immediately at arrival. Then you will be allocated living quarters, which for an offshore platform these are more like the cabins on a ship. Next you must go to the Geoservices logging unit to make contact with the personnel on shift and to find out the current rig status. On some rigs you will be expected to present yourself to the company man. The Geoservices personnel already on board will present you to the people necessary for you to carry out your job. The Geoservices engineer has a special relationship with the driller who will normally be found in his drilling cabin on the drill floor. This one is particularly advanced and has several workstations. Meal times are always welcome and are an occasion to relax and meet with the other rig hands. It is also important for your job that you get on well with the other people you are working with. Another rig, another continent, and another crew carrying out its mission. We are in Italy. This time the rig is onshore, and because there is no living accommodation on site, the geoservices engineers stay in a rented flat. At crew change, always arrive in advance. You must know your rig, how it works, where everything is, and where the geoservices sensors are located. Let's take one example, the mud pits. Usually a drilling fluid, or the mud as it is known, is circulated through the well. The mud carries a lot of information about the well and the drilling process, and can give prior warning to dangerous situations. Geoservices measures the volume of the mud in each pit, the temperature, the density, and the gas content. Another gas sensor for hydrogen sulfide H2S is also installed here, and for security in other strategic positions around the rig, which activate warning systems from the logging unit if safety thresholds are passed. All sensors must be frequently inspected to ensure correct functioning, and also regularly calibrated. If a sensor fails, the origin of the fault must be tracked down and repaired. Logistic support is available in the geoservices bases, but this cannot replace immediate, on-the-spot intervention. The returning mud is subsequently cleaned at the shale shakers, where the mud filters through screens while the rock cuttings from the bottom of the well are literally shaken out. It is these cuttings that the mud logger will collect for analysis. The focal point of the rig operations is the drill floor. Here the drill crew have the most physical of jobs, maneuvering pipe and equipment. This is one of the most dangerous places on the rig if you do not pay attention. Not only can the floor be slippery, but heavy machinery is constantly in operation, large metal objects are moved around in restricted spaces, and cables are under tension. Make sure the driller knows that you are present, and only move around the drill floor when it is necessary and when he gives you the OK. The driller controls the drilling process, and all the mechanical drilling data is displayed around him. These parameters are also collected in the logging unit, with the measurements either coming from Geoservices' own sensors or measured via links with the driller's console. The two sets of measurements must be in agreement and regularly checked for discrepancies. However, even when a rig sensor exists giving data for the driller, it is only the Geoservices' data that will become the official well record to be analyzed and subsequently used by the oil company. The mud logger has the most tangible contact with the formation and the reservoir. It is thus a post with important responsibilities. The first task is to collect the cuttings, which give a real view of the formation and its characteristics. They must be washed and graded, so as to make up required samples. Some are dried, and a small portion is taken for a calcimetry measurement. Another part of the washed sample is used for analysis under the microscope. Lithological examination enables a log to be drawn up. This document, along with others that are defined by the client, are gathered into a morning report, which is generally submitted to the company man before 6 a.m. when he makes his own report to the main office. 
Generally, there is also a rig safety meeting every morning held in the client office. This is the opportunity for a frank discussion on both sides on any operational problems or incidents, and enables progression in work methods, and is aimed at avoiding accidents. Note that in the oil field, most managers and engineers speak English, and all geoservices personnel must be able to speak English. The engineers work 12-hour shifts. Changing shift requires full briefing of the newly arrived members of your team. You update them on well status and progress, on incidents that may have occurred, and on any immediate requirements of the company man or other rig hand. Now we switch to a highly sophisticated logging unit equipped with the GeoNext system, the leading service on the market. It is the information hub, the control tower, collecting and analyzing data from the site and integrating it for continual consultation and recording. The data system is controlled by experienced personnel, the drilling data engineer, who works alongside the mud logger. These engineers maintain a tight control on the information coming from the well. They use a powerful proprietary real-time database management system to analyze the drilling process and the well parameters in order to determine if optimal and safe drilling conditions are being achieved. They are also in contact with geoservices engineers, generally located in the client office on shore, who follow multi-rig operations and perform global reporting. A drilling data engineer should build good communication channels with the drilling personnel and the service companies at the well site. This facilitates daily work and creates a team spirit you will find that many rig personnel, as well as the company man and the rig site geologist, come to the logging unit to get information updates, status reports, and advice. Your job is to reply professionally to their requests, offering quick access to accurate data and awareness of the operational status. You are an essential and respected member of the entire rig workforce. Finally, being the more senior personnel, the data engineer is responsible for the overall service of mud logging and data engineering, and for the geoservices image on site and with the client. At the end of the well, the fruit of the work that you and your colleagues have given during operations will be presented to the client and summarized as the final report. If the job has been well done, it will be appreciated by the client and country manager alike, and the geoservices engineers will have contributed to the safety of the drilling operations and helped to obtain new knowledge on the geological formations and potential reservoirs below the surface. A well-performed job will also contribute to building client loyalty from the oil company and increase their confidence in geoservices, which is the key to future contracts and the success of the mud logging service. My name is Collins Oji. My name is Catherine Ron. My name is Remy Dalabarba. I was born in Nigeria and grew up in the Netherlands. It's a very good job, very interesting, and we can learn a lot of things. My colleagues are very friendly. I've done two rotations in Algeria, and it was in the middle of the desert. Well, I hope to receive many more training and um, to become an expert within a short time travel to to know uh, different cultures and the international aspect is really interesting for me. This job is terrific and I love it very much. A good adventure. Ha ha ha!